punch their backs like animals. I've seen a lot of things. People have tell me, told me stories about how they've, um, what's it, transported from one place to another country. From They could be in a bedroom and the next minute they're in a different country. I've sat and I've counseled these people. But you know what? When God speaks and when God decrees and God declares over their lives and they receive it by faith, they are delivered of that oppression. Yeah. That ungodly soul tie is severed once and for all. And we ought to just take cognizance of the, the authority that we have. We are dressed in the authority of God. When a, when a policeman goes out there in a uniform, let me tell you something. If a juggernaut, if a if a truck comes before um comes towards him and he invariably stands out in front of that truck and just puts his hands up like that, doesn't matter how much that truck truck weighs in terms of tonnage, it has to stop by the authority that the government has given that policeman. And that's the authority that we carry. But when the enemy sees us clothed in a uniform of Christ, not just from the outside, but also in the inside, that when you command a thing, they have to take note of the very words that come from you. And so in this season, we can pray and decree and declare over principalities, over powers, over rulers of the darkness of this world. We can tear down strongholds. Strongholds not, not only exist Man. externally, but also internally. Because many right. of us can be disturbed that we don't even sleep at night. I was speaking to somebody uh, yesterday who was a child of God for many, many years. And he says, and as you know, like it was like a suit that you wear, as you know, I don't sleep at night. And I thought, okay, she had other issues that was going on with her. But I, I was in the supermarket. I came out. I prayed for her, you know, because I was thinking, that's not right. That's not right. And sometimes we would embrace things thinking that that is normal, and it's not right. The Bible says you shall lay your head down and your sleep be, your sleep okay. shall be sweet. Amen. You see? Not that you'll be troubled all night or you're listening to for every rustle or every, every noise that might uh, affect you. But God wants us to be about being peace. Be in peace. Let the peace of God reign in your hearts and your minds. And let us use and usurp our authority over principalities of powers as God has given us in the name of Jesus. Um, there is um, a prayer request that I'm reminded of, and I can't see it um, because I'm on my phone at the moment. So, uh, and it's, uh, I think Zoe has requested um, yeah. prayer. It, yeah, it's from, um, from Zoe um, on behalf of she's the, her neighbor. is giving her a bit of a, tough time according to the uh, okay. camera that is pointed uh, her direction and uh, very race, racial and so on and so forth um, and she's requesting urgent prayer um, into, uh, into the situation got to uh, got to um, intervene okay all right can can we just um direct Maybe. our heart towards Zoe right now I don't know if she's on at the moment um but if we can direct our prayers towards Zoe and just pray God's divine protection over and our deliverance from the the um the attack of the enemy. And when I say the enemy, I'm, she may be looking at this person, but there is a spirit behind all these types of activities. And so we're going to address the spirit within the antagonist at this moment in time and uh, just pray God that um, he will deliver from every sneer and every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So I just want us to stretch our hearts towards uh, Zoe right now and just decree and declare over her life God's sovereign will. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, right now, we just commit Zoe into your hands, Father. She is your daughter. Father, she is the daughter of Zion, And you have given us authority. Lord, to the same, the gathering of the saints. Lord, as your word is said, so Lord, when we are all in your way, Lord, we have a problem. I find that every word of the Lord, Lord, as we gather together as the saints, Yes, Father, the saints of the Lord, I God, you know that you're on earth, you're down in heaven, Father, we pray as we call out the Lord, we pray that you are attacked by the Christians, in the Lord of your power, and your mind, and your authority, and your soul forth, stop, and yet sort out this situation, and heal this situation, but Father, more so, bring yet a resolution, in following your mercy, resolution in your compassion, a resolution, Father Lord, in the saving, to brave in the resurrection, Father Lord, and yet the neighbor, we pray for it. They have souls today in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father Lord, that yet whatever has been set against us, that the world will prosper. God, Father, yet yes, no one turn around for the benefit of that neighbor to have life and life more abundantly. Father Lord, to uh, rise up in the name of Christ, Father Lord, of your glory. Rise up, Father Lord, and give the reason why it has been set. Father Lord, that yet, Lord, that this time you will get glory in the name of Yeshua. Father Lord, that you will get all the glory. Come on, you know that the situation that has been placed before is a test and a trial. And yet also, Father Lord, come and see the work in the Father. So we pray in the name of Jesus that as it's been set and it's here, and Father, it's this utterance in that we pray for a release, the release, yet of the prayer of the saints that have been lifted up by faith. Hallelujah. Father Lord, that by faith you will receive our own by faith. Father Lord, it shall yet be removed in the name of Jesus. Father, you can have faith as small as a mountain. You can speak for a mountain and it will be yet removed. Hallelujah. If we there tell is it to be, Father, so right now we speak no the word, yet, Father Lord, of this situation to be destroyed no in the name right. of Jesus, the word, Father, Jesus. whatever the plans that the enemy the has, enemy will back off and it will in fall. the name of Jesus, will we'll be destroyed, will be removed, will be revoked, broken, destroyed, Father Lord, in all its effects, in the name of Jesus, Father Lord, and yet your word is be the final, Amen. Amen. That Father Lord, when the devil comes in like a flood, the enemy and his know device. that you will take up a standard against him. So Father, we pray against that tide right now. Victory. I pray, let the storm be still, the winds be still. And Father, whatever is coming against the vessel that yet you have set in that neighborhood, the vessel that you have set in the name of Jesus, we pray that it will be. We speak every plan that the enemy, Father Lord, has yet risen. Every Father Lord arrow that has been risen against them. In the name of every fiery dart, in the name of Jesus, will be quenched right now. Quenched in the blood of Jesus right now. Father, we pray for a release. It will attempt, Father Lord, for our sister. That yet, Lord, she will not live in that anxiety, not knowing what she is trying to do. Or she is trying to orchestrate through yet the enemy that is behind it. So, Father, we pray for yet a resurrection of his soul. We pray yet, Father Lord, for restoration of your love and your word in him, Father, or in her. Father, whatever it seems that, Father, there are dry places up. We pray for rain in the name of Jesus. For rain in your salvation. For rain in their lives. Father, let them know that you are God. Every that you are God. The train. Father Lord, we are praying even as by our Father Lord. Lord the destiny to help us. In yet, she has uh, to the Ark of the Covenant before. She has to go to her and house Father Lord, they have woken up to see they that are he guilty. was totally destroyed. It, his arm broken and his itself. head broken. Lord, go to the high Father, court of you, O God. Of Jesus. Show so yourself you strong, Lord. Show victory. yourself, Father Lord, for our sisters, they will not Lord, only ask Father Lord, where she is. That you are present. Your presence, Father Lord. Let she it be so a, that yes, a, wherever you are, because we know where you are, oh, Father Lord, there's fullness of joy. That's your right hand. There's pleasures forevermore. 
who so come Father, to we pray for this situation and our God to be broken. Will be nothing but a living victory. Stand in the point name of Jesus, an illustrative Father Lord. We thank you for your resurrection. Uh, for your no, and build we thank you, Father Lord, for freeing the, the enemy. Yield no for allowing your power, and your might, and your authority. People in hear place, her and house, understand her. Area. In Understand Jesus how name. this comes across Hallelujah. that the housing association they do is necessary that she will be able to come to the, the police Thank and come you, in process in Thank which you. they will be of aid. We call Lord, for aid, you. every single thing that is Thank necessary. You. We call for every Thank single you. illustration. What people may not understand, but Lord, many of us can see in the spirit and we come against the spirit that tries to yield victory. We close you off, we shut the door unto you. There will be no victory in your camp. We cause confusion into the enemy camp so it will yield no purpose. In the name of Jesus, we anoint her head with your the blood, Lord God. We apply the blood over her spirit, her mind, over her speech. We also God, saturate the interview room so that every person will listen attentively, will look for reason to aid her, not reason to dismiss her. Because there will be people who will be confused, but let them hear and push for evidence. So she only needs to do this once. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. And uh, I just believe that uh, Zoe, um, praise God. I, I don't believe she's on at the moment, but I know that the Spirit of God has... Uh, gone ahead of our prayers and that she's uh, completely under divine protection of almighty God and the blood of Jesus has been applied not only to her but the very surroundings that she she's in so we thank God for the victory in her life and we await her testimony in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. um I at this time I'm just gonna even as I'm on um, I'm just flicking through the who's on at the moment. And so um, I haven't had the opportunity to welcome Shanique. Welcome um, Evangelist Jenny from America. Welcome. And also uh, Shannon, welcome. Carlene, welcome. And Seema, welcome. Bless you. Welcome each and every one of you. And I pray that uh, we'll just uh, be so transformed by what is uh, going to be shared this morning. And so we're going to welcome our dear sister, dear hey, friend. Yeah. Hey. And, um, Come you on. Know, hey. I'm just, just, I'm just to say that um, you know, Margaret has been such a blessing um, to the ministry. Thank and. For those of you who haven't uh, yet been um, at a meeting, you know, uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're now holding church. Um, on a Sunday, you're missing out. Truly, you're missing out. We've had <laughs> such mighty moves of the presence of Amen. God. And we've just of Jesus. The spirit of God. And uh, so many people's lives have been touched and so many testimonies have been realized and uh, shared um, every Sunday. So many testimonies have been shared concerning what God has done in people's lives, how they've been impacted, how change has come in their lives. And, uh, you know, and it's just a liberty that uh, we have found just coming into God, not with a, uh, um, a contrived um, program, but just not allowing God to speak and, you know, anything could happen at any moment in time because, Amen. you know, the Holy Spirit is there. And if you Amen. give everything over to the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would uh, direct us into all truths. And so there's times when we just don't know. I mean, <laughs> every Sunday, we just don't know how God is going to lead, but we know God will lead. And so I thank God for the testimonies, the healings, the deliverance, the re victory reports, and uh, God is gracious. And I would just encourage every one of you. I know as much as you are here on a, on every, during the week, 
to come and just be a part of what God's doing. And it's one thing to be here on the platform, and uh, we appreciate all of you. But uh, it's another thing. It's, it's, there's another level, and there's a level of intimacy, not only with the, the Father, but with one another when we actually come together and meet. And we have, we have a like spirit. And I'm telling you, God has done so many wonderful things. So I encourage you, as many as you can, just be there on Sunday. You will not be disappointed. And so I thank God for Margaret because uh, Margaret I've uh, known for um, many years and uh, by, by divine connection. And uh, I don't mind sharing just a bit because she may have take opportunity to share for her own, speak on her own behalf in the name of Jesus. But Margaret, um, God's anointing is upon, she's a worshiper. I'm not going to say she's a worship leader, but she's a worshiper. She worships God in respect of her life. And, uh, you know, God has uh, really anointed her to sing and to worship out of her diaphragm, out of her spirit, out of her innermost being. And she makes sounds that uh, are not recognizable to um most musicians <laughs> and because it's the sound of the spirit you see um you can't pin the holy spirit down you can't put the holy spirit in a box person of the holy spirit and by virtue of that it ushers in the presence of god and god really really does what he wants to do and uh, so we've been blessed just by having her and uh, as part of the family, Impact Alive family. And uh, supernaturally, um, after years of uh, not seeing her, we got, by his divine intervention, um, reunited us by virtue of her need for a miracle. And her need for a miracle was this, is that um, she was evicted from the place where she was, lived. And she had absolutely no idea where she was going to go. And, you know, by divine intervention, what happened was that I was uh, supposed to meet Grace at a certain time. And because, um, because someone else had a need, a spiritual need, I it delayed me because I had to, pray with someone and it delayed me by an hour so i i rang grace and said i'll be an hour late that was god's orchestration that was the orchestration That's of right the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, and so what happened is that that delay of an hour meant grace delayed one hour from exiting a workplace when grace exited from her workplace she saw I don't know if, it's, if she saw uh, Margaret or Margaret saw her, but they converged on one another, whether they bumped into one another, but they converged on one another. And uh, it was a matter of, well, hi, what? And, you know, the salutations and such forth. Where are you going? The answer from Margaret, I believe, was, I don't know. And she shared uh, with Grace the fact that she, at, she just got evicted. In other words, she came out with just one bag, I believe. And uh, she didn't know where she was going to go. And so Grace just said, okay, just come. Uh, whether she said, I'm going to meet Chris or whatever, um, just come. And I came up and met them an hour. But... Um, beyond the time I was supposed to meet them. Well, I met them, that, that delayed hour enabled me to meet them at the appointed time. And then I said, oh, Margaret. And she said, oh, Pastor Chris or whatever. And uh, I just said, we're going out. We're actually in the middle of decorating at this moment in time. So we're actually to sourcing some materials. And she just sat in the van. And uh, you have to understand this, is that, she just got evicted. She didn't know 
absolutely, she had no idea where she was going to go. And um, she just came with us and it was like, we just continued to do our shopping or whatever. We was looking for certain things and she was just there and uh, she was even inputting and giving um, giving us an uh, opinion in certain areas of what to choose and what not to choose. It was like she wasn't evicted. And so we just said, just come with us, just come. And this was in the middle of us uh, decorating our every single room was uh <laughs> every single room was just upside down and we just said come and uh that was from march she's still with us and there's such a blessing and uh she can tell the rest of the story because you know what god has more than multiplied back into her life and sh and i and i know that i'm not going to testify on her behalf, but I testify from the perspective that she has been a blessing um, to the ministry and she's been a blessing yes. to the home. Yes. Let me say something to you. God knows the end from the beginning. And the one thing is this, is that for those of you who don't know, I'm caring for a 96 year old mother. And uh, from the time uh, Margaret entered our home, she has been so giving and Just so loving that. and so tender <laughs> and so caring towards my mother. Come on now. That this is God. And I've always Amen. Said someone, Heaven said. <laughs> someone to just be there for my mom without Amen. Amen. Like they're obligated or to do, you know, you pay people to do it. And I know mm. what people are like. They can just do it for the sake of doing it. But she puts our heart Amen. And that's all into just loving my mom. And I it's been such a blessing. So God knows everything. Mm -hmm. God knows our, my, our needs, Grace and I, my mom's needs, but God <laughs> also knows <laughs> her, her needs. And so what it is, I'm just saying, God orchestrates our footsteps. And you know that's what? Right. I'm telling you that um, I've been blessed. The ministry has been blessed. I know those who've been in the ministry administration of uh, uh, Margaret when she's ministered in something, you've been blessed. And, uh, you know, so God is a good God. He's a great God. He's a merciful God. And uh, only Margaret can tell you the extent of what she, what her life was like beforehand. Because God delivered her out of a situation that wasn't good. That place wasn't 100% anyway. You know, and she made decisions that at the end of the day, people would have looked at her and said, you're foolish, you're unwise and everything else. But God knows everything. And when you love God, God will order your footsteps and bring you into a realm of victory. And he will maximize you in terms of your divine purpose. And so, you you know, God takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. But God is a great God. He's a good God. He meets every need at every, on every side. And we just mm -hmm. don't know who we can be a true blessing to. And uh, so I'm thankful. I'm thankful to God. I'm always thankful to God. And so thank God for your life, Margaret. You're such a blessing. And we love you. Grace and I, we love yeah. you. My mom loves you. And we uh, you. I know that people on this platform love you. And so we yeah. thank you. And so let us just um, welcome Margaret right now. Just, uh, Amen. Devotion. Just let's Come welcome. On. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Welcome, Margaret. Welcome, Margaret. We yeah. love you, Margaret. Yeah. Amen. Love you. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Margaret. Um, <laughs> looking forward to hearing you. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Always Bless look forward you. to seeing you every Sunday, Margaret. You make our day with your amazing singing voice. Best singing voice ever. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Margaret, if you're still there. 
Good morning, everybody. Much appreciated. Good morning. The love. And um, I wasn't expecting, you know, all of this um, accolades and stuff. I'm just like, you know, God is God. And, you know, situations happen for a reason. And, um, you know, we're not always going to sometimes have what we think we should have or be where we think we're going to be, do what we think we're going to do when you you know allow God to you know take control um you know I had plans I had decisions and things I wanted to um you know to do and say and be and and it's like you you know God says you know his ways his thoughts they're different they're not the same as ours and you know I I you know when you try to sometimes do certain things it's not going to be God's will but sometimes he will use a situation because my situation didn't look right it looked odd it looked off it looked how how can you say that God's this and how can you say God is that but scripture shows so many times you know that Job was in a situation many people in scripture would have been you know classed as crazy classed as you know you you, you just don't know what you're saying because there is this picture that has been portrayed in Christendom. You know, there's these things that are out there. We see it through the life of Jesus Christ, that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders, the people who were, I'd say, in in their perspective, divinely called of God, if you want to say, but yet they didn't know who they were reading about, what they were <clears throat> studying. You know, they they had this airs and graces on the outwards and yet still didn't know the one that they were talking about. So, <clears throat> sorry, it just relates back to the scripture that God has given me. And it's back actually the same scripture in John 3. He's got me back in the same scripture, John. Um, so I'm just going to read from... No. One second. Um, Father God, I just want to thank you. I just want to honor you, Lord God, because you know me. You know, Father God, that I'm not someone who really wants the forefront and the limelight and the, you know, the accolades, Father God. And so I just humble myself before you and before your people, Father God, knowing that this is not about what I want to say, but I'm just asking you, Father God, that you will take over my mouth, my heart, my mind. Lord, will you just take the steering wheel would you just take the reins will you be the center and the focus of everything that comes out of my mouth from now on lord i commit all that i am before you father god because this life does not belong to me lord i praise you i thank you i honor you and i know lord god that you are in the midst and i just pray father god that you will just open hearts and minds for what you want to say father god what you want to you know, introduce to someone or help them to see whatever it is you want to do, Father God, I just pray, God, that you will have your way. Bless, oh God, each and every person. Father God, meet them at the point of their need. Let them know, Father God, as the song that was um, chosen, love never fails. Let them know, oh God, that even this same scripture that you've given me this morning is also to talk about your love. And so, Father, I praise you and I thank you, Father. For this day that you've made in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Okay. John three. Verse one. Says there was a man. Of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night. And said to him. Rabbi. We know that you are a teacher. Come from God. For no one can do these things these sorry these things these signs sorry that you do unless god is with him jesus answered and said to him most assuredly that i say to you unless a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus said to him how can a man be born of born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born Jesus said, I'm sorry, Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and 
spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can this be, these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Well, most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And Moses, as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but he, sorry, but that the world would through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I pray that the words that has been spoken is about a specific person. And we know the story about Nicodemus. You know, um, so many times we have seen um, in this world, people have gone to colleges, universities, and done many studies on things that, you know, they feel they need to study for whatever reason for their um their career or whatever they maybe their family does sometimes there is this um you know you we've got to do what mum and dad says because it's the business or this is the culture this is um the traditions that people will go into these things to do and you know the the Jews were specific people who you know they they always had the story of of the son of God coming they had so much that was written in the scriptures about you know the signs to look for this this man who's coming but yet when they went to maybe seminary and they did what they did and they looked at the scriptures there wasn't always the comprehension of what it was they were studying because they didn't get the real um understanding of what they were really reading because we know that this word is not just written by men it's not just penned by um, a human being it's penned by the pen of the spirit it's it's penned by the one who is speaking and so we've seen many people say that the scriptures have been tampered with the scriptures have been changed but the pen has not changed. The, the one who has been spoken hasn't changed. And the fact that when we, we look into the scriptures, it's not understandable by our own understanding. It's not as black and white. So there has to be a teacher. There has to be someone who will give us the, the truth, the understanding. And this is where this man came into his own um, understanding he came to what was tra ah, shama, traditional what was supposed to be this is how it's always been and he may have looked at the people around him and, and saw after well look they're doing it so let me do it and sometimes we can get caught up in what other people are doing we can get caught up in what seems to be right but it's not always God so we we, we need to always look to the one who's given us whether it's our gift our talent 
Um, what are we really seeking after? Is it God's will? Because we can follow a trend. We can follow the system um, of this world. We can follow what looks like everyone else is doing, but is it still God? And this man was perplexed by what it was that the Lord was saying, even though he saw, uh, you know, what you're doing, it's, it's not just that you're doing it, but we know that there's someone and they, he recognized it as God. And so even in his, okay, he's, it's God that's doing this, but yet he was not in a place to still understand because he may have looked in his own life and saw his own um, day to days. And yet none of it could compare to the few things he saw with Jesus. So maybe he pondered in this why he was just a scholar. You know, he boasted in his, um, you know, his accolades and who he was a Pharisee to the Pharisees. You know, he he knew that he had influence. He knew he had schooling. He knew he was brought up a certain way. And, you know, this is just, how, you know, what we do. But yet a man who was different, a man who we see in scripture was said that he didn't even have schooling. You know, who, where did he get his information from? You know, who's his, his teacher? You know, they were, Aya Hashama. They were always asking these questions. And this is the things that they did. They asked questions. They were looking into this. They were looking into that. They, 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 they studied to show themselves approved. Yes. But yet still they weren't approved by the one that will approve you. And so. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. When we are doing what we're doing, are we doing it with the right motives? Are we doing it to show others or are we doing it to honor the Lord? These are the questions that he had to probably come to in the reality of face to face with Jesus, face to face with God. Ah, Shema, hallelujah. So in his conversations with Jesus, he was given this, this thing that seemed impossible to be born again. His mind went to the natural. Well, I know I was born of my mum. I know my dad. I can't do that now. How, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Are you, you know, what, what, you know, his mind must have gone miles per minute. He, he was trying to work out in his own mind. What is this man talking about? But Jesus had to tell him that this is not of this realm, this, this natural um, comprehension that you yourself are coming in. Cause even he said, look, do you not even know as a teacher the things that I'm talking to you about? It's, it's so perplexing when someone is in a, a place in the spirit, when someone's in a place of the flesh, the two are not going to agree. And so this is where we have this confusion that Nicodemus was having. And so we want to be in a place where we're not allowing the things of this world to nullify or to cancel out or to make it as dung. We need that God's word will be above, superior and greater, always the same and will never change. And that the systems and the things that even some of us or even the world, the church has sometimes placed above God that even the fact that Jesus came to open his eyes to see, because he mentioned in other scriptures when the blind man was blind and they was probably in chuckling saying, well, 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 are we blind? But yet Jesus had to put them in their place. And so the blindness was not about the physical. The blindness was about the spiritual. Hallelujah. And so they were blind spiritually, but this man was blind naturally, but he could see that Jesus was who he is because his eyes were open to receive what God was giving him, which was his natural sight. It was to come in alignment with what he would be seeing in the natural. He saw men walking, but it may have been that his eyes were so open to the different realm that was open to him that God had to bring him into the natural, 
And so we are in this place where we are using our natural to comprehend the spiritual, but it's not so. It is the spiritual that will bring light to the natural to say Mm -hmm. this is what is truth. This is what is real. This is what God wants us to see. And Mm -hmm. so Nicodemus was in a place that he had to have the natural come down and to lift him up to the spiritual. He had to put down what was of this realm to see what was not in this realm. And so I pray that when we go forth in our days, as we go forth in our ministries, that the truth of Jesus Christ will always be superior. And that in the word, as Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, to bring light to his darkness, Mm -hmm. that he was able to say, unless you are born, unless it wasn't impossible for him to be born again, but it's still a choice he had to make. I don't know if it says in scripture that Nicodemus did give his life. I've not gone that far, but yet he had an encounter with Jesus. And this is still the system that we're in in this world is that people can have this as Nicodemus and say they have this relationship or they have this religion of Jesus, but do they or have they met Jesus? So this is the question that he would have um I guess, because it is a a heart decision. It is a inner decision. And as he said, out of the abundance of the heart. And so out of him came a lot of things that he questioned, he questioned, he questioned, he questioned, because he couldn't understand. And many of the disciples and the people around him could not come to that decision, even when they followed Jesus for the miracles, the signs, the wonders, And even when he came to a place where he spoke to them and told him the people about being the bread, being the source that those, you know, who was Moses and he was given, you know, the manna. He said, basically, I am that manna. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. And they lots of people left him. They didn't want to know how can we eat your flesh and drink your blood? I mean, it's cannibalism. So they were still blind. Yes, Lord. There are there are many who will not receive Jesus because the accolade, the training that they have come from, the the systems that have been in embedded in, in the their cortex of the mind is stopping many because it's the battle of the mind against the spirit. It's a battle of what we know to what we don't know, which is spirit. There is this, as we know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And in this scripture, you know, Nicodemus may have been wrestling with flesh and blood because he could not in himself understand. But yet, brethren, we are here as born again, we're on the flip side of the cross, that God is asking us to to truly lay the things of this world down, to truly gain and grasp what he wants for us. It's not going to be through your education. It's not going to be through your education. It's not going to be about your work history or or your CV. It's going to be only by the spirit. Because what he wants to do is not going to be through the things of this world, the things that we are lifting up and saying, yeah, I did this, I did that. But even as Paul had to lay down his, so we are going to have to lay down ours. Because we need to grasp and truly allow him to occupy, Mm. occupy us as true vessels to mm. say, Lord, even if, you know, you slay me, even if I am here to die, then so be it. It's going to be a true test of our faith. It's going to be a true test of whether we truly know this God we say we are talking about. And I'm not speaking of myself, but as the spirit of the Lord 
is administering. I am also to having to take note. And so I pray that no matter where we are, and even as Chris spoke about some things about me, but yet God, I mean, even to put Nicodemus aside and say, through my life, I, I, I could not, you know, put myself in certain places. I could not find myself in certain places if it wasn't God. I could not, as he talked about being homeless, I didn't do what I thought was right. It felt like I, I'm not doing what is right, Lord. How can I be in this situation? I was, my mind and what I was hearing the spirit of the Lord say, it was perplexing. It was numbing. It was like, how can you ask me to do this, Lord? I'm in a place where people will think, there's something wrong with you. How could you not do? How could you not have money to, to pay your rent? How could you allow this to happen? What's wrong with you? God has given you wisdom. God has given you a mind to make the right choices. But I didn't know that this is what the Lord was actually saying to me. Just trust me, Margaret. Just trust me. But I'm saying, God, but I, I haven't got any money, Lord. I wasn't working. I wasn't on universal credit. I had gone days without food because I had no heating, no electric. I had nothing in the physical that could make sense. But God was with me. I'm telling you, it was hard. I went down to just skin and bone. All of my body fat had gone because I ate nothing. But he said, read my word. Read my word. I didn't leave the flat. I was in the cold. I couldn't get warm. I was so like, Lord, you know, why am I going through this? But God kept on speaking life. He kept speaking how much he cares. He said, Margaret, I know you love me. But he said, trust me. Even down to the day that they came knocking on the door, I was, <gasps> but God. Sometimes we plan getting a mortgage. We, we're planning this, we're planning that, because these are the things we're supposed to do. But I have not been able to do those things. I've had to, you know, Jesus himself didn't have a place, you know, so I had to just hand it over to God and he made a way. I could not think where I was going to go, where I walked around and I sat down in the wick gift. And I called a brother and he prayed with me. And then I went to the upstairs, to the toilet, used the toilet as I came down. Who did I see coming around the corner but Grace? And even the fact that her name, it was like God said, I'm sending myself in a physical manifestation of someone called Grace. I'm sending my Grace physically to you, Margaret. And the fact that she, you know, we, we, we didn't have much to say, but I told her, look, this is what's happening. And God did the rest. I mean, this is just how God has been because I have no strength to be out on street. And I thought, Lord, if this is what I have to do, then you're going to have to give me the strength. Amen, amen. But lo and behold, God made a way. He made a way amen. where I couldn't find. I couldn't call anybody. I couldn't, you know, I felt ashamed in some, in some way. I felt ashamed. I found Hallelujah. myself here in this position again. And, you know, you get condemned. You feel, oh, this shouldn't happen. How, is, how did you get yourself this way? Why this? Why that? All of these things bombard you. What are people going to say? Are people who said this, people are going to say that. But God was saying, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. And so 
I've been, you know, with Chris and Grace now for since, yeah, the 5th, actually, it was the 5th of March until now. And, you know, they didn't take any money from me because I didn't have any money at the beginning. And I wasn't sure whether I was even going to stay there. I just thought, okay, God, I'm here. You, you've made a way that I'm not on the street. But where do I go from here? And I had I was looking for somewhere to stay. Um, you know, I met a cousin who was trying to help me to find somewhere. I was going through looking at different places, but I say, Lord, none of these places really even fit. None of these places can even accommodate me because I was thinking of something. And, you know, Grace and Chris were saying, look, they got a room and, you know, they're going to give me first refusal. But I still wasn't thinking that. But then the Lord just said, Margaret, this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be. And I was still battling with you. I said, but I don't know, Lord. And so God got his way. He got his way. And I'm here. And, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because God is just, you know, he just weaves his way, his will, his plan, his purpose, what he wants in our lives if we will allow him. And sometimes it's not going to be as pleasant as sometimes we think it's going to be because Jesus never showed himself to be, you know, staying in one place. He moved. His life was not as sometimes it's shown by people we see. His life was his life and he had a purpose to fulfill and he did it. He did it. And so we got to allow God to lead us. Even if he says, look, this is not my will for you. You know, we see Nicodemus in a place, whether he did, you know, get saved, I don't know. But yeah. with Nicodemus, he had so much going for him. He had position, he had wealth. He had, you know, all the accolades that this world can, ah, Shama, yes, Lord. All this world can give. And it looks so inviting. It's even tempting to gain all you can in this world, as the word says, you know, what profits a man that he gained this world, but yet then he loses. What is important to the Lord is his soul. And so Nicodemus was, you know, maybe even a testament to those who think they have it all together. And say, actually, you need me. You need me. This heaven and earth is going to pass. This world is going to pass. The things you're going to have, you have here, it's going to pass. But what I'm giving to you will never pass. As the song says, my love never fails. Who I am will never fail. If you hold on to this world, you will lose me. And I don't want you to lose me, Nicodemus. I need you to know that I love you. I came and I sent myself to you. That you would have the life that I've planned for you. We see with the rich man, he couldn't give up his wealth. But Nicodemus, will you give up yours for me? Will you let this go to receive me? What will you give up, Nicodemus? Is your friends, your reputation more important? I've come that you may have life. I've come that you may see. I've come that you will be restored. I've come that you will be with me in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is the cry of the Father. This is why Jesus came. This is the position that he's called us to. And this is where our purpose will be fulfilled is in him. It's not about our connections but who he will connect us to. 
where he has, we saw with David and Jonathan. It's such a divine connection. We see, oh God, how he's so into connecting the right people to the right people, whether it's husbands, wives, whether it's friends, brothers, sisters, whether we're in a place of comfort or discomfort. But his purpose and plan is still that we are with him. So I pray and thank you all for hearing what I hope has given light, has brought truth, and maybe even helping us to make maybe even internal, you know, thoughts of what, who, where, what we are doing, that we are truly allowing the one to lead and guide us, the one that came and provided for us, the one who is truly present and is always willing to open his heart towards us. He's always willing to hear and to bless with not only the things that we see, but what's more important is the things that we don't see. The things that people will look and say sometimes that we don't look a certain way, but yet God says, actually, you look the way I want you to look. And that's, you look like me. That's the important part, is that we look like Christ. That we can say that we are our father's child. That we sound like, ha, shama, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. That we sound like our father. Lord, I hope and pray that what has come through my voice has come from you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that every person that you love here, you adore them. You died for each and every one, oh God. And you blessed them with being unique and particular to the things that you've called them and given them and blessed them with, that they look like you, that their gifts and calling is different to someone else's, that they don't have to be like their own brothers and their sisters. They don't have to be like that pastor or that teacher, but they can be as you, Lord. That's who we need to look to and to be like. Don't envy or, you know, lust after how that person may sound or how that person may live, but to live as Christ. This is the only thing that is truly important to the Father. And I pray, Lord, that even as each and every person here and those not here, Lord, that as you lead and guide, direct, and love continually, Father, that they will find their true self in you. Father, I pray where there are those who have wanting to find or to see or to be Lord, maybe even sometimes unknowingly like someone they saw. But I pray, Lord, that you will help each and every one of us to be content with who you've made us to be. Father, I pray that we will not seek, Father, to be like any other man but the man Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that the individuality that you've given each and one of us, Lord, before we were in our mother's womb, that we will be drawn to the one that you are, Lord, in that part of us. Because out of us, Lord, is because of what's in us. Out of us is what's because of what's in us. And you have shown, Father, through your word, and you exposed many, Lord, in what was in them because it was what they had learned through traditions, through culture, 
through maybe even bad situations, Father. But we are here, Lord, and where none of us are finished in the sense of the work in, in us. Yes, we are in the spirit, but we still have a working to be done in our characters and, and in, in our thinking and in, in many different areas, Lord, which you are still working on us. And I thank you, Father, that what you have begun in each and every one, you are so willing to complete. You are so um, joyous, oh God in seeing yourself in us as a mirror. Lord, I'm grateful and thankful for each and every soul here, Lord God, that will hear Jesus and not me, that they will see Jesus and not me, that they will know Jesus. I thank you, Father, that they are blessed and highly favoured. I thank you, Father God, in their respective places, wherever they work, whether school or whatever they do, Lord, that you bless them, Father, that you will anoint them, that you will appoint them in every um, situation, that you will guide, that you will lead, that you will speak your beautiful words in their hearing, Father. Let them know that you love and adore them, that you are, Lord God, thankful that they said yes to you. For many have been called, but there are a few that have been chosen. And these, oh God, you have chosen. These, Lord, you've placed your hand upon. These, oh God, you have blessed with your spirit. And I'm thankful for each and every soul. I thank you for their hearts toward you. I thank you, Father God, that they will shine for you. Lord, I pray that all, all, Father God, are covered in the blood of Jesus. And that you will continue with them on their journey. And that you will continue to speak, Father. Let them not be in a place where they can't hear you, Lord. But I pray that eyes and ears and hearts that the entire body is so, so, so attuned to your voice. So attuned to your voice. Father, I thank you. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you Margaret, for just sharing in that area. I believe that uh, there is a song that is in your spirit that... Uh, you want to minister at this time and, uh, you know, just um, God wants to hear you, hear that melody in your heart and that will minister to everybody in the hearing of that voice, his voice in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am the Lord that he left me. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word to heal all this need. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that he left me. I am the Lord, your healer. Cause I sent my word to heal all this evil. I am the Lord. I am your Lord, I am the Lord, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you, Margaret, for just administering Amen. the word of Father God. And uh, whether it be through song or through speech, God has spoken this morning. And, uh, you know, even as she shared a word and even shared her testimony, you know, it would have spoken volumes into the hearts of many, of many, many of you. And the mind of many, many of you. And I just pray that you will take comfort and strength for what from what you've heard this morning. God wants us to trust us, trust him in every situation, irrespective of how extreme and how ridiculous it looks. God is a faithful God. God is a just God. God is a merciful God. God is a tender God. God knows all things. And whilst you're going through something, God has already established for you a way of escape. But we don't often see that because we don't see that God really loves us. If I know that I love my child and my child is caught in a situation, and uh, I know that there's a way out for that child to be delivered of that situation, that sneer. I know that God, I know that child will be delivered. I know when I know I'm going to be delivered out of a situation because I know God loves me. And uh, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we already have the petitions that we desired of him. That's the confidence that we have in Christ. And, uh, and so I just thank God. I thank God for his grace and his love and his mercy. Praise be to God. Thank you again, and um, Margaret, for sharing this morning. And uh, I know that uh, Fiona, your hand is up. And if anybody um, wants to just share something, you may need a prayer. You may, there's it that you can relate to the testimonies or the passage of scripture. You may want to ask specifically for prayer in those particular areas. Then. You know, this is your opportunity. Um, Fiona, uh, go ahead in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning, morning. everyone. Good morning. Margaret, uh, um, I'm really sorry. I didn't manage to hear your, your testimony. But as you were speaking um, and sharing your wor the word of God, and as you were um, sharing about how much you, I, I heard the part about Nicodemus and I heard the part about um, God, um, you know, just inviting him to come as he was. And the scripture that came to my heart was, there were two scriptures. One was Isaiah 61, where, um, and then your song confirmed it, Isaiah 61, verse one, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me. This is what was prophetically said. To bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. To proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical, spiritual um, captives. And freedom to prisoners. Romans 10. 15, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban instead of dust on their head, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, 
the garment of expression of praise instead of disheartened, a disheartened spirit. So they will be called the trees of righteousness, strong, <clears throat> magnificent, and distinguished for integrity, justice, and right standing with God. And um, as you were as you were praying that, um, and as you were saying that, uh, it just it just came so strongly to me that Jesus came to set the captives free, to set them, to set us free. He came because he so greatly loved us. He so greatly loved the world. And that kept um, coming over and over and over in my mind. God so loved the world that he gave. We can put our names in that. It's always on the basis of his love. And we all recognize love. When we see love, we're drawn to love. Jesus drew, drew people to him because of the love that he showed and then when jesus confirmed it please um i'm sorry to go on but i'm just um just confirming what he said in four where he said um in when he was in the uh i think he was in the um it face, he was facing the you know the the pharisees and and in the temple, I think it was where I just read. And I think it's in Luke four, where he said, he said the same thing. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. And he said the whole thing. And then he says, and this day it is fulfilled. Amen. This day it is fulfilled. And yes. so as, as you were saying that, Margaret, it was just like this day, the day that God, that Jesus Christ came to, came into the world, died on the cross and, and rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, it is fulfilled. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Jesus, for fulfilling what you've already said. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Fiona, for just sharing and uh, reflect in reflection of uh, what Margaret shared. And um, truly, this day is it's been fulfilled and uh you know i i'm always very mindful of uh god's love and god's grace towards humanity and uh god didn't put in stipulations about creed color size condition wealth status qualifications or anything like that you know, and, uh, you know, St. John 3 and 16, just reading down from what Margaret read, it says, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the world might be saved through him. and. Uh, Sometimes we can look through our natural eyes and so quickly judge someone in terms of their appearance. Oftentimes I think to myself, <laughs> it's a good thing God ain't coming for bodies. Because if we judge, if God judged people according to bodies, we might think um, bodies are corrupted. But God's coming to save our soul, our spirit being, that part of us. That has been that was separated through judgment of sin, the darkness of sin. Jesus came as a light bearer to give us light, to give us a new life in Him. And uh, you know, I I often you can't help but you see people and you think, God. 
These people are tattooed from the crown of their head right down to the soles of their feet. And in the, in the natural, you think they're so far from God. And yet that person, that person may and could well have give, given themselves totally and wholly and solely to God. Even with their tattoos, even with their ear piercings through every part of their body, through their face and through their nose and lips and everything like that. It may look grotesque. They may look grotesque in the, in the natural, but to God, they're their son. They're his son. They're his daughter. He only sees the beauty of them, himself in that person. And so it's not what we see. We are just the way God would look down, look down at a man that even persecuted the church in Saul and see potential in Saul, see Saul as the apostle, that he would send him out, send him out, not to the Jews, but send him out to the Gentiles, that he may reach the Gentile people that were not born Jews. God gave him an assignment, and that assignment was before the foundation of the world. And yet, prior to that assignment, he was killing <laughs> the church, the body of Christ. God can look beyond that and still say, I can use a man like him. And God would take time out to meet him on Dam Damascus Road, Jesus appearing to him and changing his life completely. God will do that. And I, what I'm saying, that God's love is so deep, so wide, so broad, there's no searching to his understanding. God's love. God's love. You know, there, there are going to be people. And I, I, you know what? I'm telling you. Since we've been at the wellness center, people have come there and uh, they don't look like perfect people from a world perspective. But, you know, God loves them the, the same way. And I've seen where God has ministered to these people and God has manifested his grace upon their lives and God has healed them or they've received miracles. And God will continue to do that because God is no respecters of persons. In other words, God love, God's love to humanity is unconditional. Yes, it may well be that you may have to minister to the unlovely. You may, it, God may contradict your mindset and the very people that you may have reviled and looked on and said, that's nasty, whether they be homosexuals or uh, from the LGBT or whatever community, you may well, God may well impress upon your heart to minister and to reach out to them. Why? Because they're God's creation. And God's not coming for their acts. He's coming for their souls, the spirit, their spirit, so that it be regened into his likeness. And it's the regening of the soul into the likeness of the Father that seals them for eternity as they focus on Jesus, continue to do so. And um, I'm so glad that God has not come for perfect people. Perfect people. <laughs> so the first shall be last and the last shall be first. What does that mean? Those people that the world might esteem as being celebrated by vir virtue of achievement through man's perspective, Oftentimes, they're the people that will not find humility in their hearts to say, you know what, I need a savior.
I need Jesus. I need God to come into my life. They may have so much that they don't feel that they could. They feel that they have so much to lose that they don't receive Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that God will never visit them. I believe God visits everybody in his own way to minister to somebody that has a need for Jesus is whether they receive Christ. And so the important thing is to love, love unconditionally. Look beyond what you see in the natural and reach out to that person, minister the love of God. The words you know that Jesus would administer into that person's life undiscriminatively and say, Jesus loves you. Will you not receive Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord? Will you not give him your life? Focus on Jesus. If you focus on what they have and what they look at, you'll miss it. Focus on the spirit of a person. God will enable you to be a soul winner. winner. Those that win souls, they are wise. And sometimes we don't win souls because we're too busy judging them and thinking, well, they're not all that I thought they might be. See it from a God perspective. See people from a God perspective. They're, we are all God's creation. He loves us, each and every one of us. And sin is just missing the mark of God. Missing the mark in respect to what God ordained us to be in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it is important to understand it is the work of the Holy Spirit that saves us. We don't save ourselves. Our righteousness will never save ourselves. And you may say, why am I saying all that? Because you know what? It doesn't matter how much you achieve in this life. Without Christ, you are nothing. And that comes home to me. It doesn't matter what gift I have. I can have the gift and... You know, sometimes you, you're you quoted as being the best in certain areas and you think to yourself, well, without Christ, I'm nothing. <laughs> I'm only con I can only be the best in Christ because from a world's perspective, they may esteem you highly. But as God, as man may esteem you, if you're not surrendered, if your life is not surrendered wholly and solely to God, you have missed it. If you are not, if you, if you don't fear God, in other words, if you don't really give God everything and count him as your, your precious vital necessity and seek him with all your heart, you've missed it. And so we all need to take that responsibility and take the reins of our life and say, God, I'm steering my heart towards you as you are welcoming, welcoming me. And that's so important. So bless you. Um, I love each and every one of you. And um, there are so, there's so much more that God wants to do through each and every one of you. And uh, so to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Keith, you got your hand up. Go ahead. Um, it's very, very profound where you've got the scripture where it goes, be hospitable to the company you keep because you could be entertaining an angel. I mean, it reminds me of probably one of the hardest hmm, one of the hardest illustrations I've ever had to deal with. Where I, I went out, out and, and evangelizing with a, a a team of people that I go out with on occasions when I can. And I don't just share just the word of God, but I share evidence and illustration of what God has done through me, through testimony. And 
these two men walked up to me. And with me, you know, in my flesh, apprehensive, you know, while everybody else was covered with another person, if somebody walked up to them, they would kind of lightly buffet them aside so that they don't yield maximum effect of what the spirit can do through them. But with me, I was by myself. So these guys got within reaching distance. So I they politely let me finish, which I thought was, okay, this is showing signs of something far different. And as some of you may know that I got abused, sexually abused as a child. The first thing that came out of their mouth was, would Jesus ever consider people like us? And I'm like, as much as I want to, what do you mean, sir? I had to wait. I was held in silence. And I had to wait for them to finish the extended part because you've got to be patient enough and willing enough to allow them to kind of finish the point that they were sharing. And they were sharing that, you know, we're both convicted paedophiles and oof, that was really heavy. I can't lie, I felt my hand clenching behind my back. Like this is my opportunity to strike down people who are doing some demonic stuff to children who don't have the ability or the uh, function to defend themselves, even if they tried, even if they knew they couldn't do it by themselves. And that was probably the one of the hardest confrontations. I don't like the word lightly, but I was confronted by myself, not by them. It was my own flesh. And the ability to engage with them, I had to keep remembering, remembering what am I doing this for? What is the reason that I'm out here? What is the purpose for why I'm here? Less of me, like the, the scriptures kept downloading into my head right at that present moment. And a brother came up behind me and he tapped, kept tapping me on the shoulder. And that was the thing that kind of brought me back, Keith. Look what your flesh is doing. You're clenching a fist, ready to strike these people out. You had to keep tapping me on the shoulder, and it is like the Lord tapping me, even though I knew who it was who was tapping me by flesh, but through that flesh. I say all this because it's not easy. You can go face and meet people who are going to cause you to your flesh to rise um you're going to meet people that you may not like and we will decide against doing things because of our decisions but we have to remember critically and in fact the conversation was got seriously deep and detailed seriously like stuff you don't even want to hear even if you haven't been through that kind of a thing. That stuff was, oof, it was far too detailed. And I had to ask the Lord, help me with my self-control. Help me with how I am. Because they're doing stuff that can be for your purpose. Because we don't know who God has chosen. We don't know. He wants all to come to his kingdom for his glory, but also to share and to illustrate unto others. So who am I to stand in the way of that? It was, I won't lie to you, my flesh was warring with me. Like, like never before. A rage that I prayed that didn't show on my face because they were still standing there talking and relaying and the details, Jesus it took me back, it took me back to where I was. This is your opportunity, Keith. But I had to remember, what am I out there for? What is the purpose of me standing open and exposed in a way for the sake of Christ? That's what kind of relented my mind to thinking, you know, I have no means to judge one another. 
I have no means and I dare not have any means to be looking or transposing or assuming how somebody can come. Because doesn't the word say I was once blind, but now I see. I'm not to judge a person saying they're blind either. At the end of the day, they came to me, two of them. One telling me, I think it was, um, he's had four convictions. Another one who said, you know what? He doesn't know how to get out. He doesn't know how to break. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 came to my spirit. And I had to relay it to him in a way that it was passive. One of them started to cry and I thought, Lord, this is you. This isn't me. And I had to say to him, sir, nobody here can condemn you for what you've openly said to me. Maybe one day, by the grace of God, I will tell you an opposite side, but I have to leave it to God. Because if I do this in my flesh, I could ruin what God is clearly doing through you. And I, had to, I just started to pray for the brother. I gave the mic over to the brother next to me and just started to pray with them because at the end of the day, how what was coming to me so strongly is how dare I, with my conceptions, with my, you know, who's going to make it to heaven, fleshly mentality, how dare I come across as if I'm God in that very moment, as if I'm the judge. I'm the one who's merciful. Did not God give me mercy and grace that even though I went through these things, isn't it the same mercy that he will bestow upon these two people who came to me openly, out in public? They confessed their sins. One of my favourite scriptures is James 5.16. Now, how can that be one of my favourite scriptures if I act like a hypocrite and treat them a certain way? I can tell you straight, it was one of the hardest things I had to deal with, being confronted by somebody who wasn't the one who did it, but to hear of how they are and still walk away saying, Lord, I know that in my mind, my heart, my spirit, I judged them, my flesh, I judged them. Help me with that, Lord. Because I can't come across as, I've, as if I'm perfect, like I've done no wrong. But these brothers have come and I call them brothers of the Most High God because that is the first step. That is the very first illustration that we tend to negate is who's going to come to him. It's not for the sake of me. It's not for the sake of the, the, the body of people that I was with. It wasn't for the sake of the church that I attend. It wasn't for the sake of it. They came because they needed to change their own life. They needed a break away from what they now recognize is wrong. And that's what the words in which I had to pray. And I felt so strongly that I had to pray. Romans 8, 1 came to me, do not be condemned. For the first fact is that you openly suggested something, man, I, I still can't forget it. They openly spoke on something that a person walking by could have overheard and would have sought to destroy them. Let's get one of them, two of them out. But yet they came. And they spoke to somebody who was afflicted by the very thing that they done unto other children. Plural. And I was like, wow, Lord. Wow. It, it gives you a whole different viewpoint on what can happen. What God can bring you if you feel that you've forgiven them and done all of these things. And we, we say, yes, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, give me the ability to forgive them for what it is that they have done. Yet God will test you upon that. He will trial you through that. Are you sure? So when we see a brother or sister, I actually call them saints. Like when I go out half the time, I'm like, Lord, how come these words keep coming out of me? I call them saints. I don't see them how they are now I see them how they're going to be that's how we've got to step out that's how we've got to move and it doesn't mean it has to be on a street corner it can be anywhere you are whether it's a hospital appointment 
on a train, on a bus. You don't have to do it so boldly and, and flamboyantly like certain people. You don't have to follow the algorithm, but you are put in position for a reason. The things that you went through are for a reason. And we have to constantly learn that we are positioned strategically for his kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We don't choose who's in it. We just want more people in it. More people so that the Lord gets maximum glory. And then the glory can be illustrated to them because what well, I had to kind of think when they walked away, because I won't lie, I dropped to my knees and I was like, Lord, you know what? Thank you for allowing my flesh to take no to take no ruining or ruination of you. Because imagine if I did strike them and you guys are Christian people, is it? Is that what you do? That would be the advert that people would watch that the next time I come out, that's what they're going to remember. It's the aftermath. It's the steps afterwards that when we leave, these are the things that we pray for before we, we, we start and we begin. What is the effect that we're going to leave upon another? Are we going to welcome the next, I will not say generation, the, the generation that is desiring for something more than what it is that they may be doing, facing, what they may be overcoming, what they may be perplexed with? What are we doing to enable that next step? That to me is the heart and soul of evangelism, as well as sharing the gospel, the good news. Don't get me wrong. But it's my character. That's the part that I look at constantly. And it's like I see people highlighted now in my spirit while I do these different things and go different places. I would ordinarily not be bothered. But now it's a whole different meaning because, again, what if what I had to say had to change the heart and the mind of somebody who may be so deep and trapped in, who may be even so lost? What if something that I say, but what I'm facing or going through or even over, um, even overcome? What if the one thing that I say can change the heart and mind of a soul that's trapped, that's dying for something different than what it is that they're currently facing? Each and every one of our stories are useful. Instead of looking with the eyes, let's look with the spirit. Let's look with, that is God's chosen. Not God's chosen by, by the mirror that's reflected before us of that person. That's God's chosen, period. Tattoos on them or not, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Do the tattoos speak of Christ? May not do, but the soul does. So look at the soul. Look at the, 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 that one individual who with those tattoos can talk to people that you can't talk to. That one person with crutches can talk to people that you wouldn't talk to or could not talk to. That one individual who may have a, a leg amputated, that one individual who may smell funny would be around other people who they, through Christ, can talk to. And you dare not. It's very interesting to me. I thought I'd kind of share that. God bless you all. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Keith, for, for sharing um, that truth in so many areas. And, uh, you know, um, people can identify with you when your story relates to theirs. And uh, that's why people are different. Their experiences are different. No two experiences are exactly alike no two lifestyles or lives are exactly alike in terms of how they lived it but there is something that that an individual may relate to in regards to what another person has been through and so they will then have a listening here to hear what that person has to say and once you can present can present the love of God to the person by the Spirit of God. You know, the Holy Spirit does the rest. And, uh, and sometimes we can negate just reaching out to people because we think, well, I have nothing to share. I have nothing to give. 
And in that fact, you look at yourself and think, well, can I even speak? Will I make sense of the person? It's not up to you to make sense of the person to the point where you you articulate yourself to let a person understand. It's not by the understanding. It's by the revelation of Christ, who that Christ is, who the light giver is. When the light of God shines into a dark person, a darkened heart, it makes a whole lot of sense to that individual because they don't even know where they're, why they're crying, why they're tearing up, why they're reflecting at that moment in time of things that they've been through, why the very sobs that are coming from them are a testimony of their confession and a desire to ask for forgiveness for their sins. And sometimes we look for the perfect occasion the perfect scenario, the perfect environment, the perfect person. <laughs> and God's saying, no, no, it's, that's not it. It's by the spirit of God. And um, there's a lot to be said um, about today. And I know that it may not be all hallelujah, praise God and everything. But you know what? It's a truth. And when we can celebrate God and his goodness and his grace and his mercy, where he has enlightened us and delivered us out of situations, and uh, you'll find that you become more of an evangelist. You know, we've all been given the spirit of reconciliation. And that spirit of reconciliation says this, is that we have the ability and the grace in us to reach out to somebody and share the good news of Jesus Christ to, so that the Holy Spirit will draw, God himself will draw them to himself. That's our responsibility. And you, because you don't like somebody or you don't like a church, or whatever the case might be, you don't like their music, you don't like the word, you can't strike someone out. It may well be that all a person needs is a word of truth, but because you might, you might not at that moment have the ideal place to direct them to, direct them to the truth, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit direct them to where they should be. Holy Spirit knows how to do a lot of things. He can place you in the right place at the right time, knowing that you are willing, you have a willing heart. And you, you may say to yourself, how is that that somebody can just speak to someone like that and they respond to the gospel? Because they're, they're not judging the person. They're just reaching out with the good news of Jesus Christ. It happens. It happens. Beverly, go ahead. Your hand is up. Bev, good morning. Are you good morning. Yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, all, all I was going to say is like sometimes that um, I've met people and I haven't got anything to say to them, but just to be kind. And sometimes it is just to be kind and you never know that that next door, um, not next door, but when you meet them again, that can be an opportunity to speak to them. So whether he's got or she's got tattoos or whatever the case may be, I always smile at them. You know, some are engaging, some are not. But the, the mere fact that you actually smile at people, you know, we, we say we're Christians and we walk around looking like a wet weekend. And, um, you know, like if like if I see Grace, her face is always bright and breezy and her smile. And uh, Chris as well. Oh, sorry, Pastor Chris. He's he's got that smile as well. There's so many people that have got that are Christians that look like a wet weekend you know we we spend so much time wearing crosses and whatever else 
that's not that is not it. You can wear whatever you like. You know what? I've seen people lately that have got crosses on and Saint, I don't know, Saint somebody, and they don't believe in anything. It's just they they just like it. It's a fashion thing. Statement, it's somebody, yeah. yeah. It's somebody. Somebody gave it to them, or they want, it. and it doesn't mean not. It doesn't mean what we take it to mean. It it's just a fashion statement. But regardless of that, we we just need to be, um, you know, like people should look at you and know that there's something different about us. It's not about wearing a cross and, you know, like this, and I'm not knocking anybody, but some people, they don't, they've been told not to wear makeup. You can't wear earrings. Da, 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 da. That's not, that's not being a Christian because it doesn't mean anything. It's, that's man-made. It's man-made. So, it's what's in the heart. And I have to tell you, I was a bit naughty. I went to a church that um, that didn't, you weren't allowed to wear any makeup. I'm sorry. I, I went with my lipstick, bright red. And I wasn't being unruly, but that was the color that I wanted to wear. And I wore my earrings. And, it, you know, that's not, if you can judge me for how I look, as your as this word went on today, you judge wrong. So it is about who we are as as Christians, and remember not to walk around like a wet weekend, even when we're going through things. Because the testimony is, why are you looking the way that you do? because you're going through that. Okay, I can see time is up. <laughs> you just looked up at the, okay. Yes, a subtle hint, get off. All right, bye. No, no, I, no, that wasn't the case, Bev. Um, no, you, 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 you have time to complete what you have to say. Don't, don't mind me, don't mind me, um, but- No, it's, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you. But Bye. thank you. Thank you for your contribution. And I hear, I really hear what you're saying. And, um, you know, let this light so shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your God works and come to glorify the Father, which is in heaven. And, uh, and so there is a light in each and every one of us. And when we speak of Jesus, that light, that flame in us just illuminates even brighter. And that's why, it's, you know, it doesn't take the, the ordained or the, the paraphernalia or the whole of the uh, of theologian to win someone to Christ. It's just the Christ in you. The, the desire to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And even as Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ. For it is a power, the inherent power, the dynamite, the dunamis of God unto salvation. And so... Um, so it's so important, so important that we share the good news and, um, you know, the simplicity of the message this morning. Yeah, it's the most powerful message that we can ever administer. You must be born again. You must be born from above. There has to be a, in, an internal change on your spirit on your spirit that was dead to god it has to be made alive in christ that's the good news you must be born again and uh 
So again, I just uh, thank um, Margaret for just sharing this morning and uh, sharing her testimony. And uh, if we can just remember to share with someone, even if it looks uncomfortable, just to mention Jesus, just say Jesus loves you and God has, wants to change your life. Even that will provoke a question in an individual that says, what do you mean by that? You know, give someone a lifeline. Hand them something that they can hold in their heart, in their spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to water upon it. In Jesus' name. Uh, thank you again, Bev, and Fiona for your contribution, and uh, Margaret again. I bless each and every one of you, and I believe that um, we're going to just close um, with a song. Um, I can't see it from where I am in terms of the title, but 